Welcome back everyone to Battletech Advanced 3062. Uh, my favorite mod for the base game Battletech and by far the one that I've been playing the most recently. So we are finally up in clan space as promised some time ago and well we have to sort of dial it back a little bit. So our faction reputation with clan Novacat, which is I believe the only clan you can actually ally with, um, <clears throat> well it's not great. I was allied to their enemies for quite a while, so we've had to undo our alliances with the Worth Blake, with uh, House Merrick, and with the Torian Concordat. So all of that work is undone, and we still have to build up our reputation with Clan Novacat if we ever want to see the inside of their faction store. So with that in mind, we are currently taking a Three Skull battle, and because of the reduced difficulty rating, we are fielding a somewhat reduced lance. So we have the Dervish and Centurion that are well, ever so popular frontliners for me this campaign. We have the Kingcraft, we have the Plasma Marauder, and the Atlas 7S. So we do still have pretty advanced capabilities, and the reason for that is, uh, well, the clans are no slouch. Uh, in fact, they are pound for pound far more deadly than anything that we faced so far, both in terms of their accuracy for, you know, actually landing hits on target, <clears throat> as well as the punch that each hit will have. So generally, clan weaponry runs hotter, hits harder, and hits more accurately than non-clan variants. So there's a Shadow Cat, which... Awesome name, not my favorite uh, looking mech, at least not from this angle. And because, well, we did drop in earlier and they had no, no beat on us, he hasn't moved, and we're going to take advantage of that, so improved binary laser on the way. Not bad. Uh, decent hits from the missiles as well. This is one thing, so lots of clan mechs are omni mechs, and this means that generally you can exchange their weaponry very easily, but you can't mess with their core internal components. Um, cores, gyros, engine rating, um, anything like that. Well, engine type, I mean, uh, not engine rating. Although, can't really do either. But more to the point, um, clan mechs tend to, from what I've seen anyway, run larger engines, admittedly with Clan XL, and that makes it a little easier to do, but larger engines than their Inner Sphere variants, which often means that their armor is a little bit fragile. And this is something we can see right now. The Shadow Cat is, admittedly, taking a pretty decent beating, um, decently well. It looks like we ripped off both arms there. So that'll at least help us with avoiding a little bit of fire. We have taken this one for three salvage. My intention is to field Clan Max and Clan Tech as soon as is reasonably possible. So we are still moving up the Atlas. I do have the bracing cockpit on there still, but the plus three accuracy will help a little bit more once we get in decent range. And let's fire all those Thunderbolts. One, two. Oh, that's beautiful. And the light PPCs in just to seal the deal. We've taken out our first clan mech, only one salvageable part, and something you may notice, destroy enemy units is listing 20%. That's because, well, kind of like Comstar, the clans don't feel what are inner sphere regular lances. So an inner sphere regular lance is generally four mechs. The clans field five, Comstar and Word of Blake field six. Of course, Word of Blake being a derivative of Comstar uh, itself. So those are the non-standard things that we have to kind of get used to. And we do now have a Phantom moving up into position. Now that sort of thing there, seven evasion pips, that's not unusual fighting against clans, and that can be a definite problem. So we're gonna try and land our Narc launcher on this guy. <clears throat> Looks like we do land it, so that's plus one. Uh, should be somewhat helpful at least. And they're reserving down, trying to get us to move first. I mean, I do the same thing to the AI uh, for a very good reason, because if you can pull that off, things get a lot easier. So if we take a look now at our Atlas, we can definitely see that plus three by engaging the bracing cockpit would be very nice. Let's go ahead and brace and pull in a precision strike, and hey, look at that, 20% goes up to 70%, and this is a shot that I feel okay taking, even though it's through seven evasion pips, which is a truly bonkers amount of evasion. Lots of ER small lasers and other things on that Phantom, I don't want to let him get close, and we definitely tag him for some significant damage there. Unfortunately, we aren't able to quite knock his um, evasion away, and that might come back to bite us here, but both legs opened up. I kind of wish we'd taken out one or the other, but if I can get anything else on him, we might be able to 
take care of that. So let's go in another precision strike with the rotary gausses just sitting still with king crab. And this is the inner sphere answer to superior clan tech. Overwhelming firepower. <laughs> That's basically it. Yeah, they can run around us. Yeah, one for one, we might lose the light mech or medium mech duel to a truly superior mech design. But, uh, well, if I shoot at you enough times, it's probably going to go okay for me. Now, something just exploded, and I'm not entirely sure what. Let's take a look. Oh. Did they friendly fire their own mech to death? Kind of looks like it. So we've got a Viper. Beautiful looking mech right there. Look at that. I like the flames. I like the spots. Yeah. Kind of looks almost like a Blackhawk, though. Hmm. We have a Royal Thunderbolt, so that's not even a clan mech, but it's just a Royal version, so it must be left over from the uh, Kerensky's Exodus days. Interesting. Probably won't get innate clan quirks, which means that uh, it'll behave a little differently. It can actually punch things and kick things, unlike clan mechs that do get massive debuffs to that. And let's see, he is carrying ammunition. Let's see if we can find it. Nope, nope, and okay, he does have case right torso we could try shooting for that but uh you know i'm gonna just gamble on that 10 percent headshot again because if we do land it one day it'll be kind of fun and no probably should have gone for the ct just try and core him out but uh i mean it's a royal thunderbolt it's not the most deadly thing ever but it does have a decent amount of punch for a while in the um in the base game at least these things were Thunderbolts were one of my favorite uh, mechs in the entire thing. I mean, granted, there are so many more choices in Battletech Advance than there were in the base game, but I just, I love Thunderbolts. The heavy armor is wonderful. The look of the mech is just amazing. I mean, look at that. The, well, I think that's just a hit screen. Anyway, look at that. This is why I played this game, is because, I don't know, I mean, that's just, it's a cool looking mech design. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and it makes me happy. So we're gonna fire in, land the arc launcher, hopefully land all the SRMs as well. And since we're standing in the water, we're gonna pop Battle Lord to increase our damage, and we're not even that uh, that much over our cooling. Okay, we land the arc. We land a decent bit of damage. Let's get Ridge Hound up, and I want him coming around and back down the other way. So let's get on the move this way. Hopefully that'll split their attention and allow us to get some rear angle shots. Uh, let's see, Hellbringer. Ooh, very nice, very, very nice, also known as a Loki. Wonderful, wonderful mech. Let's see if we can kill it. I would happily one, uh, run one of those, uh, although, I don't know, they tend to be a little bit lightly armored. 640 armor total for a 65 ton mech is not exactly super survivable, um, but we can always see what we can do. I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world to have light armor like that. Uh, okay, plasma rifles firing in. Yeah, right, torso destroyed, and this is the perk about them still being able to do some modicum of physical damage as well, is you can you can push up toward the red line, uh, light things on fire, but you can also make sure that you do make some progress to killing the mech the old-fashioned way, uh, namely taking it to pieces one shot at a time. So the enemy viper is moving and for some reason not shooting. I wonder if there's an optimization problem there that isn't well handled uh, on my particular machine because I do I did do a RAM increase uh, not terribly long ago, but I don't know, I still get some weird behavior out of this. Let's go for that leg. We could have gone for the CT. A 44% chance to hit the CT is not spectacular, and I figured, you know, if we take the mech down, then we'll basically be guaranteed to have nice shots in the CT and may even take the pilot out, although, nope, he is sticking around this time. Good for him. He uh, has gumption, as they say. So our Centurion now, despite the hot biome, will be standing in the water. It gives us a little bit better cooling than we had previously, and we could go for the Hellbringer again, try and take out that right arm of his, or we could try to finish off a 44% chance. It's a bad angle. Um, is he still going on this turn? Yes, so he'll stand himself up if I don't shoot. You know what? We'll shoot for this guy. Uh, let's try... Eh, why not? Okay, looks like a fair bit to the CT, and yep, that's a dead mech. So that's three down, two remaining. Now you can see why I've just fielded five mechs instead of a full seven. And this is a bit of a confidence booster. We are chewing our way through a clan uh, star, even without having uh, technology that's really on par with that. So the things that we're looking for, by the way, I want clan SRMs, because uh, that'll definitely improve our dervish. 
by a significant factor. I also want just mech chassis. I mean, if we can if we can field our own Hellbringer, if we can field our own mechs like that, we'll be in a pretty good spot. So let's see. We do have the bracing cockpit engaged, and we're a little bit out of range for the Hellbringer. But if I move up the full one that I'm allowed to move up with the bracing cockpit, we can get uh, direct fire. Unfortunately, out of range for the light PPCs. But let's fire those thunderbolts. Pretty good accuracy. One, two, three, and four. Actuators destroyed, loss of stability damage, that is a knockdown, and the Hellbringer is reacquainting himself with gravity once again. Pilot bleed out, two turns, and unfortunately, for our salvage purposes, quite a lot of mech destruction there. So both arms going down, ATM-6 did get killed, and I do like ATM-6s, I think they're very nice. I'll take AC-20, maybe we could grab, I'm thinking that we should wait this guy out, just let his, uh, let him, let him bleed out in the cockpit. Uh, and focus on killing this Viper instead. Although he's not exactly the most threatening Viper that I've ever seen. I don't think he's even fired a single weapon at us. Um, if he did... Oh, okay, I mean, he's really close range to the MGs and Flamers. I probably should have looked at that beforehand. Because of that, let's see, does he have MG ammo somewhere? Yes, and it's not case protected, unless he has Clan Pharaoh does is by default case protected, just not case 2 protected. Let's go for a leg, see if we can knock him down. And we'll cook him pretty good with this, yep. Okay, leg is gone. He's nearly shut down as well from the heat. And down you go. That's what you like to see. Well, it's what I like to see anyway. Let's get Max up a little bit closer in the Dervish. And we haven't used, he has a Stone Cold ability, but we haven't needed to use it. Let's go for a kill here. Uh, not quite able to get it if I move up this way. We can still be in the water with Ridge Hound and fire at that damaged right side torso. Beautiful. Now everything else should travel into the CT, and that's a dead mech. Very nice. We just have the uh, one guy to wait out. Should be one activation remaining after this. Uh, a little bit of a glitched thing there. His arms should be falling off, but his weapons are still in place. I think it's because maybe the um, maybe the weapons and the arm aren't synchronized as a single object, so when the uh, fall-off code hits, it doesn't take the guns with it. I've seen that a couple times before. Uh, not always, but it certainly can happen. So we're just going to brace. We're going to let them bleed out. Oh, I didn't see a bleed-out marker. You know what? Let's see if we can just finish him off with our Atlas. He's within range of the PPCs, and it'd be wonderful to see that Alpha Strike. First, second, third, and fourth missile. There it is. Wonderful. Four salvageable parts still is pretty nice. Uh, stick around for a second, we'll show you guys the salvage. Mission successful. Okay, 480 C bills is not bad. I took it for. Um, Almost maxed salvage, but not quite. One one slider away from it. Building a little bit of rep with Clan Novacat, and let's see if we get up to liked. Yep, that's four skull max contract difficulty. So we need to get up to here before we switch planets. Should be able to do that just fine. And no real damage to our own. Although our, our dervish did take a bit of a pounding there. Yeah, I mean half his armor gone from his arm. That's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's look at salvage. There's one, two, three, four Hellbringer parts, which means that we wouldn't be able to bring one online no matter what we did. There's four Viper parts, so no luck there either. Royal Thunderbolts. I don't have Royal Thunderbolt pieces, but I think I might have... I think I might have some. And let's look at the Clan Tech. Clan ER Mediums. These do get nerfed in the... Uh, if I was actually up to date, I think they lose a little bit of damage, maybe gain a little bit of heat. Um, but for right now, they're fine. I think. Uh, medium lasers, active probe, clan XL engines would be pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. Uh, clan Pharaoh would also be pretty nice. I'm tempted to take the clan XLs. Come on. Yes, there we go. Uh, because we wouldn't necessarily get that. If you salvage Omnimax, you're not going to get XL engines because they're built in. Um, so I think we got these from maybe the Phantom? 
when I ran a Phantom in the other campaign, I absolutely love this thing. You can make it go uh, at like 10, 14. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But we'll take a Hellbringer part because I think that will be good for us. And ooh, we got three Hellbringer parts, two Phantom parts, Thunderbolt, and a Viper part. Very, very nice there. Getting three Hellbringer parts means that if we see another one, it shouldn't be terribly hard to bring that mech up to, uh, to full duty. Alright, thank you guys for hanging around. We'll see you again real soon.